Hey guys, it's Pete from MyJewelryBench.com. Today we're going to do a start to finish job. We're going to take a stone, this beautiful piece of lapis that somebody gave us to make a ring with. We are going to design it with our computer. We're going to 3D print it with both the Elegoo Mars and the Epix X1 printers. And we'll send it out for casting. Once we get it back and we're happy with the results, we'll do any finish work we need to do and set the stone, get it ready for the customer. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. Let's get started. So we've got this beautiful piece of lapis. It is a really nice stone. It is approximately 14 millimeter by 10 millimeter. And we are going to make a ring to fit this. Since this is a custom piece, first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to open up my blender and uh, version 2.8 and I'll import some objects from my library. And if you don't have these objects, cause they're not available yet, but they will be hopefully uh, first week of January. Um, you can design your own, so don't be afraid to go ahead and design your own objects. Now, I already have these objects in my library, so I'm just going to import them because it makes it a little easier. I've got this beautiful oval uh, setting that I designed a long time ago uh, for a vintage looking ring for my wife, and I'm going to reuse this piece for this lapis. You can see here what I'm doing is I'm adding a cylinder in addition to the pieces I'm going to be using, and that cylinder I'm going to size down to the same size as the lapis stone, which is 14 by 10. I'm going to make it that size so that I can work with this piece and get my head or the setting um, just how I want it to fit when I get the lapis installed onto it. Um, it just makes it a little easier for me. So for this particular option, what I'm doing is I'm looking at uh, the cylinder that I added I'm making that the same size as the stone and then I'm going to size the head to match that cylinder this allows me to again have the right size head design when I go ahead and 3d print this I'm just going to zoom in here and you can see I've got the cylinder already done and I'm going to size down uh, the head or the setting to match that a little bit don't forget you want to increase the print size of your 3D printed objects because in casting they will shrink just a little bit. Not a lot, so you got to keep that in mind. And uh, you, you always want to design around a, maybe a 2% shrinkage. Now the caster I'm using for this particular job also indicated to me that he would like me to increase it up about 5% um, to cover any casting errors. A silver is a little bit harder to cast when you're using 3D resins, but gold and platinum seem to cast really well and uh, I'm going to do the next piece in gold. So here I'm just taking that band I have. I'm going to make it a little thicker because I want some substantial uh, weight to this piece. I want this piece to mimic a, an antique ring that I uh, have in, in stock. So the customer really liked that ring, but uh, that was yellow gold. This is going to be sterling silver. Now if you remember, I use a circle and a curve object and then I take my my bands and I kind of wrap it around that curve to give me the right size um, I'm, I'm working with a uh, approximately size 7 for this particular ring and I'm just going to give it some texture here um, so that you can see kind of what the ring looks like when it is uh, all set but this is going to be the final design for this ring so here's the ring in its final version and I'm pretty happy with it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is just make some little changes to the uh, texturing so that you can see. I want you to see through some potential rendering what the ring is going to look like. Now it's not going to be perfect um, in my drawing, but when I come out with a 3D print, I want it to match this. And then uh, once it's cast, we can clean and polish it. So here I'm just going to export it out to an STL file. The STL file we're going to use to import into our sheet 2 box slicer, which I use for both my Elegoo Mars and my Epix X1 printer. And I'm going to use the same resin to print on both of these printers, and I'm just going to take the best example of whatever prints and use that to send off to casting. So here you can see I've imported the STL file into my slicer, and we're going to go ahead and 
just make sure we've got all our supports done. I'm going to print this at, obviously, you can see a little bit of an angle, about 40%. That way, I know I'm going to get a nice even print off of it. And I won't have any uh, weight issues when it comes to printing this. I noticed printing both on the Elegumars and the Epix X1 and the uh, Photon S, if you print at an angle, especially with jewelry items, they do tend to come out a whole lot better. Um, you know, other models that you may print that aren't related to jewelry um, depends on how they're modeled, but they tend to have more curves and angles to them anyhow. But I notice these resin printers print much better at an angle. So I'm just checking my slicer here just to make sure everything sliced good. I'm going to save out the file and export it out. Save it onto a memory stick. Now I'm using the fun to do castable resin. This resin is really good resin. Um, there's another resin I use too. I'm going to do a review for that one in January. That's coming up soon. This resin worked pretty good. You can get this online. It is currently not available through Amazon, unfortunately, but when it does come back, I will put it up on my website so that you can go ahead and get it. The end result of the print is uh, this. This was the uh, first version. I didn't like it, so I reprinted it, but I didn't film that one. So you're getting to look at the worst version with all the scan lines on it. But here I'm just going to do a test here. I've taken off the supports, I've cured it, and I'm going to test fit the stone to make sure it fits. Now the stone should fit a little bit loose on the sides and that's kind of what I'm hoping for and it is a little bit loose because I know once casting is done I'm going to lose about two or three percent of the size which should tighten that up and allow me to cut the bezel a little bit better for that stone setting. Well it's time to put this on a plane and get it ready for casting so I sent it off waited a few days and then it came back. So what I got back was this silver piece that had some blemishes in it. I took some time to use my laser welder and I filled in some of the porous uh, areas, or actually not porous, but some of the spots that didn't get cast correctly. I also smoothed out some of the rough edges before I went to uh, the finishing of this particular piece. Next step is to start cutting the sprues. Anytime you get uh, a, a metal cast object, it's gonna come in usually with a sprue. Now, I supplied the silver for this, so the gentleman who did the casting, he gave me back everything that I sent him. And normally, if the casting company is supplying the materials, you'll just get the piece back with a tiny little extra piece at the bottom because, of course, they're going to keep their material, whether it's gold, silver, platinum, etc. So, off to sign. Once you're done cutting off all the sprues and getting everything cleaned up as best you can with your saw, the next step is to go ahead and grab some files and start your finish work with the files. I'll initially start this with a rough file, and as I get closer to the finished piece, I will use some fine files. And I, I use very, very fine files for this, or uh, in some cases 600 to 800 grit sandpaper when I get down to the finish. I don't want to take any material off. Gold, silver, platinum, they're very expensive products to uh, file away, so you don't want to do that. Remember, you should be doing this on your workbench where you can save all your filings, guys. Don't let this stuff get away. You can put it in a baggie and send it off to a uh, smelter who will give you back a lot of money for all the material that you end up cutting, sawing, sanding, uh, and dropping under your, your bench tray. So now I'm just finishing up the last of this just to get the ring as good as possible. Um, I'm pretty happy with 95% of everything that came out. I had to do some fill-in work, which I did with a laser welder um, that was evident on the top. If you go back and look at the uh, first images from what I received back from the casting company, you can see I filled in a couple little voids on the top. Everything else was really good. Um, there are no, from what I can tell, there's no porosity in this. I, uh, it's a nice, heavy, solid piece. It came out really well. Here you can see I'm using some rubber wheels. I use a rough rubber wheel and then I'll finish it off with two fine and extra fine polishing wheels. Now I'm just cutting the, uh, the top of the ring here to get ready to set the stone. So I'll cut the groove in for the stone and get it ready to bezel set. Um, that's what this is. This is a bezel set ring. Uh, once I have that fit where I like it and it the stone goes in good and it seats really well without me having to worry about it falling out. Um, I'll go ahead and just finish it up. 
Now, once I've got the stone set, I think I got the stone set here, I'm gonna just start doing the polish work, uh, take off some of the rough edges that came from casting in the inside diameter of the ring, and all the finish work that I put into the sides, I'm gonna polish up. I did not set the stone, so here we go. This is where I'm gonna finish getting that groove cut and making sure that the uh, lapis will fit perfectly into this new ring. So I continuously cut and test, cut and test, cut and test, and once I'm happy with the fit, that's when I'll start burnishing the stone into uh, its seat with the burnishing tool or the bezel tools. And you can see I've got the stone in, it snapped right in this time. I think I've got a good fit. And now I'm gonna use the bezel tool to push that bezel over the bottom edges of the stone. For those of you who don't know how to uh, set a bezel stone or a cabochon stone into a bezel setting, let me know in the description below and I will do a little video on that and uh, write an article for it because I think you'll be pleased to see how well it works. It's pretty easy to do. Cabochon stones can be inexpensive. You can get them relatively cheap online and settings are, this is probably one of the easiest settings to do. And this ring's given me a little problem. That bezel, uh, when I cast it, I cast it very, very thick and I probably should have filed it and polished it down a little bit more to get some some uh, dimension off of it, but I didn't do that. Here I'm using my pink uh, extra fine rubber wheel and I'm just gonna buff out any little marks that I put into the ring with the bezel tool. And you have to be careful not to touch the stones. Gemstones, all gemstones are, are susceptible to damage even from these rubber wheels. So you don't want to run these rubber wheels onto especially a soft stone like lapis. Definitely not turquoise. I'm going to give this a little bit more polish and a little extra clean, and here we go. I think it turned out okay. This ring needs a little extra work on the polishing, and I'm going to do that off camera. Probably once I'm done with this video, and I will get it uh, perfect for the customer. I just wanted to show you that, yes, this is pretty easy and pretty inexpensive to do. Um, the casting cost about $50 with my material, a little less than that. So overall, that's not too bad. I probably could have done this in gold. It would have been a little bit more money because it would have used a little bit different investment. But here you can see as, a, as an example, I printed another copy of the 3D model in castable resin. You can compare the two stones there or the two rings there. And the final product. I think came out pretty good. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off, do some finish polishing, and just take off any of these abrasive ends and edges on it. So again, guys, this is what we started with, a beautiful uh, lapis, 14 by 10 millimeter. Did a 3D model on our computer, then 3D printed it with the uh, Elegu Mars and the Epix X1 with castable resin from fun to do resins. And again, this resin is not available right now on, on Amazon, but you can get it online, so just do a little search for it. Send it off for casting, and this is what we got back. A really good example of a piece that uh, uh, I, I really enjoy doing. A nice custom piece with an antique look, and I think it came out pretty good. This resin works really well. My caster does a good job. I really like him, and I'm going to keep sending him stuff. We're going to do some gold pieces in the future and see how well those turned out. So stand by, because in January, we got a lot more stuff coming. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for all the shares and uh, the thumbs up. Anytime you guys can share or give me a thumbs up on a video, it helps my channel grow. And because of you, my channel has grown exponentially this year. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care and enjoy the holiday season. Thanks guys for taking the time to watch some of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you like these videos and you find them helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to see new stuff that I put out, usually on a weekly basis, hit the subscribe button and you can get notified by clicking on that little bell. I really appreciate any sharing that you can do and the thumbs up that I get if you like these videos kind of helps with my channel to grow. You'll see that in the descriptions and on my website, I do put affiliate links to products that I show and use in these videos. Those affiliate links uh, give me a little small commission, doesn't cost you anything if you buy them. And when you buy within the first 24 hours of clicking on those links, I get a tiny little commission that helps keep this channel going. 
any little bit helps to keep this up and running. Again, thanks for taking the time to watch it. If you liked it, hit that thumbs up and share on social media. Take care, guys. Happy watchmaking and jewelry making. Thank you.